Welcome to Discovery Watch with John Kaiser. I'm Jim Goddard. Welcome back to the show, John. Jim, I'm glad to be back. John, last week you talked about Avon Resources and its high-grade gold results at the Forest Kerr re- Project. The stock is now trading above 40 cents. Are there any new developments? Well, the most important new development is uh, just after we did the show a week ago, uh, the company announced a $4.3 million private placement at 30 cents with a full 45 cent warrant. And the important thing about it was that Eric Sprott led it. He bought about 45 percent of it, uh, and uh, and this has helped. Uh, in addition to the 800,000 that's come in from some recent warrant exercise, put their treasury at six million dollars. So Abin is in excellent shape to continue work on at Forest Kerr as long as uh, you know the the, the the season allows, and then carry on with its Chico project. Uh, in in, the, in in early early spring and January or so in in, in northern Saskatchewan, um, there's still another three and a half million uh, warrants uh, that could that are in the money right now. And as we discussed last week, uh, all those holders have to think: okay, uh, do we uh, sell into the market now against those warrants and maybe hope to buy it back cheaper? Uh, or, or do we just ride it out and, and see what happens? Uh, we are vulnerable to the seasonal downturn, but who knows? Uh, the other development uh, that they just announced yesterday <clears throat> is that uh, you know, after they drilled the 13 holes at the, the north boundary zone where they reported results for the first one, which was several intervals of uh, very high-grade gold, they decided to move the drill to the south boundary area uh, and test a... Um, copper gold uh, in soil anomaly uh, in an area that has never seen any drilling. And they just reported that uh, these holes have intersected quartz sulfide veins that have uh, calcopyrite, uh, copper copper sulfide mineralization in it. Uh, uh, they, they, un- unlike the north boundary zone where they can see the visible gold uh, in, in the core, in this, in this type of mineralogy, you would not see the gold that would be associated with the pyrite in there. So they need to see what the assays are to, to see if they found the, the source of the, uh, the soil anomaly. So, uh, we, we're still waiting to see the rest of those, um, dozen holes drilled in the north boundary. And, uh, they repeated a lot of the, uh, um, sort of background in the news release, uh, uh, emphasizing the complexity of the geology. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that that's not a sign that the uh, results from those other holes are coming in uh, uh, not anywhere near as uh, spectacular as the first hole, but with a shift to the focus, uh, you know, about couple, one and a half kilometers to the south, uh, this helps uh, the company have at least two focal points within the Forest Kerr project uh, in the Golden Triangle, uh, both of which could end up uh, delivering uh, news flow uh, as drills uh, continue to uh, churn away in that area. We'll have more with John Kaiser right after this. Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp, RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain's Brunswick property is located in the Ridout Shear Zone in Ontario, with grab samples running as high as 32 grams per tonne gold. A follow-up drill program to test numerous targets located by recent groundwork is planned for early 2018. Please visit our website at rmroyalty.com. I'm Brian Fowler, President of Blind Creek Resources Limited, listed on the TSX Venture Exchange, ticker symbol BCK. Blind Creek is focused in the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and British Columbia. The company's key property is the Blend Project, one of the largest undeveloped lead-zinc silver deposits in Western Canada, plus plans to advance the recently acquired, fully permitted historic engineer gold mine in the Atlan District of Northwestern BC. Check us out at blindcreekresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with John Kaiser. John, the $2.1 billion cash bid by South 32 for Arizona Mining has now closed. What can we expect next from Richard Warkey, whose recent track record has left Robert Friedland and Ross Beatty in the dust? Well, that's an interesting question because, yes, uh, with $2.1 billion, that's pretty pretty astonishing uh, uh, accomplishment, and that follows the $550 million uh, uh, Augustus uh, take over for the, the Rosemont project in Arizona, which in turn followed the uh, 
one and a half billion dollar takeover of Fantana with its project uh, in in Colombia. So he's turning into a real serial uh, uh, success story. Um, so what what I've done is I've looked at the other companies that he's associated with, and one that uh, popped up uh, recently is a is a shell company called Armor Minerals, uh, which has about um, you know forty something million shares outstanding. And he and Robert Peruse, who is a lawyer and who has also been a director of um, his other companies, uh, uh, they together own about 98% of the stock. And, and there was another fund, which they bought mostly at uh, $0.05 cents and at $0.12. Cents. And then there was a million-dollar financing done that was uh, uh, sprayed around some other people uh, who have some stock. But this is what you call an old-fashioned super shell. There's about... Uh, 78 million shares uh, fully diluted. If they exercise their five cent warrants, uh, these two uh, uh, individuals will own 99 percent of the stock, with maybe a million, million and a half shares in the public float. And what's interesting is uh, recently uh, the stock has dropped from its 40 bid, 60 uh, offer range, and has been selling down into the mid 30s. And it turns out the seller is Robert Peruz, who. Uh, has started selling into the into the bid, and it looks like the, they're they're trying to get the stock to be at a more reasonable value because the project they have uh, they haven't had much to say about it. Uh, uh, their website doesn't even have any information about it. So this this is a shell company uh, which is probably going to end up going lower. But it's it's really uh, you know a, a puzzle as to what they can put into it uh, and, uh, and and how anybody else will make any money from what is almost a private company. I would instead put my bet on Titan Mining Corp, which uh, came public uh, late last year through an IPO uh, in which Richard uh, Workey had a uh, 40% initial interest. Uh, it owns the Empire, the Empire State Mine in upstate New York, uh, just a short distance northeast of Watertown. This facility... Uh, is a zinc mine. It's been processing uh, ore from CDEX zinc deposits in the vicinity. It was on care and maintenance when Titan Mining took it over, and uh, and they have now put this back into production, about 1,800 tons per day. Uh, they are doing drilling to uh, expand the resource. When they went public, uh, uh, they had about 4 million tons of uh, Three hundred dollar rock, uh, reporting only only a zinc a zinc credit, uh, and uh, they w- will be drilling deeper targets. Also, scavenging around in the general area to look at other deposits that they can uh, uh, delineate and and bring to this operation to feed. Um, Titan Mining also did a deal um, last year uh, with uh, or in 2016 uh, with with uh, with uh, Arizona Mining in Arizona. Where because um, Arizona Mining was busy with the Hermosa Taylor project, uh, um, Titan Mining, uh, when it was still private, uh, went and uh, started uh, pursuing some of the leads they had in that area, and uh, and and Arizona Mining had a sixty uh, percent back in right, but interestingly, that back in right vanishes when there is a change of control, and lo and behold, there is now a change of control. So whatever they have picked up in Arizona. Uh, they have not spelled out many details, but they are permitting an 18-hole program. It's an unpatented land that they staked. So, you know, given how difficult Arizona is, uh, uh, it could be a while before they have drill permits. But uh, since the start of the year, Richard has himself bought two million shares in the open market at prices between a dollar eleven and dollar forty-four. So he clearly believes in this company, and. Uh, uh, he may not limit his activities to build a, uh, a zinc powerhouse uh, out of just this uh, Empire State Mine and, and, and the surrounding area. Who knows? He could even be uh, uh, paying attention to Bob Wares, who has just been promoted from plain chairman to executive chairman of Osisco Metals. And we, we talked about Osisco Metals in a, in, in a previous Discovery Watch episode. Uh, they have the Pine Point Project uh, up in the Northwest Territories, where they're doing a, an extensive drilling program to upgrade into 43101 category enough, uh, uh, or to put this thing properly into production. Um, they are ailing a bit right now because uh, they do want dollar twenty a pound zinc, and with all this uh, anxiety about the uh, trade war and the sell-off in the metals market, uh, 
zinc is now back below a dollar twenty, which is not really helping the uh, the zinc optionality cause. But they are also very much focused in the um, Bathurst area of New Brunswick, where they are doing exploration drilling, and uh, and this is and this is an area uh, which, which uh, you know also an old camp, uh, largely depleted. Uh, but the uh, you know Brunswick deposit uh, churned out 128. Uh, Number 12 turned, churned out 128 million tons of 8.6% zinc and 3.5% lead. Um, they're now looking deeper and, and in more clever places for uh, ore left behind. When Noranda had this area, it looked for a big, giant deposit similar to number 12. Didn't really find anything. So now we have the juniors in there looking for smaller versions using deeper penetrating uh, geophysics to, to detect targets. Uh, and they just uh, raised another $10 million, $10 million uh, flow-through bot, bot deal at $0.90, cents, probably has a charity component to it. So they're well-funded, and uh, and that's an area, too, where one might see a Titan mining uh, perhaps absorb something like a Cisco Metals down the road. But for now, I think they will uh, uh, focus on... Uh, uh, on, on, on in the New York state area, northern New York, uh, to see if they can put together more uh, ore to feed the mill and extend the life beyond the 2024 that the current resource uh, uh, makes possible. We'll have more with John Kaiser right after the break. That Adventures Corp is a potash exploration company focused on the Korat Basin in Thailand, the world's largest undeveloped potash resource. Vatic's management has extensive potash exploration and development experience in Thailand. Vatic will have marketing advantage compared to Western producers. Drill program commences this spring. Vatic trades on the TSX Venture, symbol VCV, and on Frankfurt, symbol V8V2. Visit our website, vaticventures.com. Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Magnum Gold Corp Inc., MGI on the TSX Venture Exchange. A 2015 drill program on the LH property intersected high-grade gold including 16.9 meters of 13.58 grams and 11 meters of 20.66 grams per ton gold. A follow-up drill program is planned to further evaluate previously identified subsurface high-grade gold mineralization. Please visit our website at magnumgoldcorp.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with John Kaiser. John, are there any new Discovery Watch stories related to zinc? Well, the one I would like to introduce as a new Discovery Watch uh, company is Wolfton Resources and its Picket Mountain project in Maine. And you ask yourself, Maine, where? That that northeastern corner of the United States where uh, it is almost indistinguishable from Canada in terms of forest and moose and and, and, and wilderness? Uh, well, well, yes, and it's part of that whole Appalachian terrain that hosts the Bathurst uh, uh, VMS deposits. It also hosts the uh, Buckins system in Newfoundland, which itself was a you know fantastic deposit, 16 million tons of 14.5% zinc and 7.6% lead and a good 1.3% copper deposit. Now, what's interesting is that in the mid-'80s, an oil company's uh, mining division, Getty Mines, went and explored in Maine, and uh, they had some sort of um, soil anomaly that they followed up with geophysics and drilled these targets and managed to come up with a, a couple of lenses. They are not; they do not have very much strike, but they are the kinds of lenses they've been traced now down down to 800 meters, probably go farther. They are described as being. Uh, a traditional VMS system that has been enriched because it's been compressed, so it's been squeezed together in a way that they think uh, has happened to the Buckins deposit also, which is um, very much higher grade than the uh, than the Brunswick uh, New Brunswick deposits. And this system has very high grade zinc, lead, and also decent copper, silver, and uh, and, and mentionable gold values. But it's probably right now only several several million tons, and uh, in, in, in 1990 or so, Getty Mines got absorbed by somebody else, I believe it was Chevron, and, and Chevron lost interest in this project. The, uh, the ground had been optioned from a timber company, 
which uh, was never interested in doing anything with this project. And Maine itself in, in 2013 decided it was going to review its mining mining law. And in 2017, they finally came up with a new regime that outlines exactly what you need to uh, get something permitted. But there are a couple provisions, and one of them is that there is um, no open pit mining allowed in Maine. So all these optionality type plays where you're going to dig a big pit and uh, and then go you know wander down the grade curve and then hope for a, a rise in the metal prices to bail you out and make it worth developing that's not going to work in Maine. And they also uh, introduced something that some of the Canadian provinces have introduced which is that you need to put up a 100 year bond for monitoring uh, whatever mess you have created uh, in the site. And, and, of course, that bond is related to the footprint of disturbance. So underground mining is what you're after in, in, in Maine. And what Wolfton did is uh, it approached this timber company to option the project. But the timber company said, you know, we don't really want to have anything to do with mining. So they said, we'll sell it to you for U.S. $8.5 million dollars. And so the company agreed. And of course, Wolfton, uh, it's, it's, it's a, one of my bottom fish companies. It had been focused on its, uh, Bathurst, uh, complex of projects. And it also had some nickel, copper, cobalt, uh, plays in, in, in Manitoba. But it managed to, uh, strike up a relationship with, uh, with Altius, uh, Minerals Corp, which, uh, is a royalty company. And Altius, which, uh, has a fair bit of familiarity with the Buckins deposit, uh, it said, okay, we will uh, buy a royalty in this project. Uh, uh, they put up uh, uh, some certain amount, uh, about $5 million or so dollars to buy, one, buy a 1.35% royalty with an option to buy another half percent uh, uh, for, for $7 million, and this is U.S. And then they also participated in a $0.25 cent financing. They put up another $3.5 million dollars at uh, at 25 cents. So this enabled Wolfton to acquire this project outright with only the royalties granted to uh, Altius. And there's a kicker in that uh, it also includes the timber rights, uh, which they, you know, think might be worth five, five, six million dollars. And so down the road, if the project is a bust, there is still some timber that can be uh, harvested and uh, and, uh, and and recover some of the acquisition cost. But they have now just completed a 10,000-meter drill program. Uh, the focus is to establish, the has been to establish the down-plunge continuity of the mineralization. Uh, they've confirmed that the high grade does persist between the 400 and 800-meter uh, depth of the west uh, lens. Uh, they're still awaiting results, but they are gearing up to do another 10,000-meter drill program uh, about uh, two and a half to three thousand meters of that will be focused on some geophysical targets that they've generated uh, one uh, ip chargeability to the southwest of the lens uh, and also they've got some uh, one to the to the northwest uh, so they will be doing some exploration drilling to see if there are repeats of these uh, high grade lens but the other the rest of the money is going to go towards infilling this system and demonstrating that we have an underground uh, mineable situation, uh, you know, rock value 350 to, to 450 uh, uh, dollars a ton. And whether they actually build a mine there, uh, it would, it's probably might not be large enough for that, uh, for the, to build an entire milling complex, but they're not very far from a railroad, so they could rail this or conceivably to Titan Mining's uh, Empire State operation where they could uh, handle this. So so the, the linkage between Titan Mining and what uh, Wolfton has has uh, taken on in Maine, uh, it, it's a new thing that's opened up. Maine's been off limits. Uh, they were one of the first to move in and take advantage of a, of a stranded system that was abandoned because of, uh, you know, change in attention and uh, you know, hostility towards having any sort of mining going on in, in a place like Maine. Uh, it is a Ewan Downey company. His flagship is Premier Premier Gold, uh, which is his main focus. Uh, 
Don Hoy, who comes from Mac Watson's uh, Free West World. Uh, he's been the um, the VP of Exploration there, was CEO for a little while. But uh, uh, Ron Little, whom they just bounced out of Orzona, uh, uh, where they uh, became unhappy that there were um, delays of some sort uh, as the company was doing a feasibility study. Uh, uh, so so he was replaced. Uh, and uh, uh, you and Downey said, you know, Ron, why don't you take charge? You've got experience with advanced projects. So Ron Little has now taken the helm as a CEO of uh, Wolfton Resources. The company has enough money to keep doing this work. And, uh, and this project... Uh, um, if it shapes up to be several million tons, that could be uh, uh, mined and shipped uh, as high-grade ore uh, with grades better than what any of these other deposits are are, are currently uh, delivering to, to their mills. This could be the next uh, new discovery in the zinc space that delivers big rewards for Discovery Watch investors. John, thank you so much for the update. You're welcome, Jim. We've been speaking with John Kaiser, his website, kaiserresearch.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on Discovery Watch are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at howstreet.com. Discovery Watch is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.